William Hill, sponsors Seconds Out. Radio Raheem here at Madison Square Garden with Clarissa Shields, the undisputed middleweight champion of the world. Here, not last time we talked, you were making history, and here you're witnessing history. It was a hell of a fight night. Uh, I, I'll start at uh, a little lower on the car because it's the women's fight. Obviously, I'm curious to get your thoughts on uh, now you have an undisputed sister in the <laughs> in the fight game in uh, Katie Taylor. What'd you make of that fight? It was way more competitive than me and Hammer for sure. Uh, um, I thought it was overall a draw, but. Uh, I don't agree. I mean, I agree that I feel like it was a draw or either Katie got it six, six, uh, six to four. Delphine pursuing strong, experienced, and just a very good fighter. And it was a great fight for women's boxing. I think you'd have to be a real fan of women's boxing to know what a pursuit might be bringing to the fight. She was an underdog. I didn't hear many people predicting that she would get a draw or a win or that fight would be that close. Were you surprised? I was surprised that. Katie got hit so much. I was surprised Katie, our defense wasn't as good as we've seen in the past. And I was surprised at the game plan for the fight. I don't, well, I heard she wasn't listening to her corner. Looked like she wasn't listening because the game plan would have been keep boxing, Delphine pursuing, keep using your speed and your jab, go to her body, take some of her strength from her. But Katie had some other stuff going on in there that probably played into the match but overall she's the new undisputed champion so congrats to her uh as a fighter you know a lot of fighters at at moments don't listen to their corner it, you're right it was uh, unusual in a fight that close that you'd probably want to take advice from people who've been giving you advice just i know you don't you're not in their head but as a fighter what do you think happens in that moment when you decide i'm gonna just go all out and, and scrap and you do that because of whatever game plan you have you feel like it's not working You've been getting hit. You know, like Mike Tyson said, everybody got a game plan so they get punched in the mouth. It's the truth. You know, you may go out there, she may have watched footage and be like, oh, this is what I can do. But once you get in there and a girl really hits you, you be like, oh, hold up now. <laughs> let me let me get some respect. Let me get some order. So she wanted to fight Delphine for soon and show her that she wasn't so strong after all. Uh, I think Pursuit deserves a rematch. It sounds like something that could be made. Do you think that this fight is more decisive in the rematch? How do you think that might go? Rematch could go either way. I say that Katie needs to go back, watch the film, and if she does what great fighters do, which I believe she will, uh, she'll fix her mistakes and have a better game plan. Moving, well, before I move to the main event, I, I know I, I even retweeted it. You put out a tweet about the yeah, I won't call it controversy, but the debate about who's the quote. It's a phrase that at least you coined as far as I'm concerned. I've been asking people what they think. Eddie Hearn said she was the quote before the fight. After the fight, do you think you've made your case? I say I'm the quote because of my performances and what I've done in my resume against top fighters. I won decisively. Um, I've never questioned whether I was a gold or not. I've always been the greatest woman of all time to me. Uh, they were going back and forth about it on social media. I don't care what they think. I know when it comes to boxing and to fighting, Clarissa Shields can't be fucked with. So that still stands. I've never had a, a close fight like that, like Katie had with Delphine Persone. But I have fought against the best girls in my weight division. So this is not a knock to Katie Taylor, but I am the greatest woman of all time. And she'll be second place until she can perform like I did against Hammer, against another top fighter. Well, in the main event tonight, we saw Anthony Joshua upset by Anna Ruiz. We've seen Anthony come out in the white robe with pictures of him in front of Ali. Uh, a lot of people had a lot of hopes and expectations of his reign as heavyweight champion, which came to an end tonight. How shocked were you at that? And did you lose your voice shouting at, during that fight? Yeah, I lost my voice. Uh, I'm surprised. I was shocked. And I wasn't shocked by Andy Ruiz's performance. I was shocked by Anthony Joshua's. It seemed like to me he was just, I don't know. He was, he was too uh, relaxed, but then at the time he should have been relaxed. He was very overconfident. 
he made little small technical mistakes, like circling to the right into Andy Ruiz's right hand. Um, then going to the left, when he circled to the left, having his left hand down. Um, I think when he dropped Andy Ruiz, it was great. But the way he, he wanted to finish him as fast as possible, he ended up getting caught. Um, in the, and then that's how he got dropped in the third round. <laughs> Speech, I don't know. It was, I didn't expect to see that. At what point did you know the fight was over? Uh, when he got, I knew it was over when he got dropped in the seventh round the first time. And after that, I just was like, he looked like he was really hurt. And, uh, he didn't. He didn't put his hand up. Yeah, he still had his left hand down, right hand up. And I'm like, I don't want him to ball up, but I want him to start cycling and try to, you know, make Andy Ruiz chase him, but move out the way. But I knew, you know, he was a little hurt. It is hard to recover from knockdowns, especially when you already been knocked down twice. Now it was the third, then it was the fourth to end it. Everybody has made fun of Ruiz, including himself, about his shape and size. You know, he calls it his flab. So we're not disrespecting him by, uh, you know, smirking about it. It's kind of an ongoing joke with him as well. But nobody thought, and a lot of people for that reason, that he could compete with somebody with the kind of physique and stature. He was, he, Josh was taller and longer. Everybody uh, can laugh about how somebody looks. Um, me being who I am. I never was concerned with that. I, I thought this fight was a harder fight for him, for Anthony Joshua than Miller. I say that because of I've always worried about the experience of Anthony Joshua. He was a great amateur and won the Olympics. But I've been in boxing since I was 11 years old, and I'm grateful to start at that young age. But when you start when you're grown, you got to start from scratch. You know, it's not something your experience, the experience matters. People may not know. Andy Ruiz has 160 amateur fights. That's a lot. I had 78. That's a lot for a girl. But the experience he has, he fought against Joseph Parker. He's unknown. You know, he was unknown. And I even heard that somebody said that, that, that they thought he beat Joseph Parker. I knew it would be a tough fight, but I thought AJ was still, was still in. But AJ has been learning on the job. There's going to be a rematch. I think yeah. there's no question about that. Do you think Andrew Ruiz can do it again? I'll say no because when you win something like this, your whole life changes. And if the rematch is fast, that will play in favor of Anthony Joshua. He'll have all the attention off of him. You need to be on Andy. And it's about how Andy can handle it and really – um, AJ, if you watch the fight, he'll see his mistakes, and he'll. I think I don't. I, I don't think he underestimated Andy. I think. I just think he didn't expect him to bring that much. So now, hopefully, he knows that. Expect everybody to be a hundred percent better than whatever you've ever seen in them because they're fighting against you. You know so. I believe AJ can come back and be champ again. And lastly, should that happen, and we're looking way down the road now, but should that happen, the fight we've been talking about for two years has been Wilder Joshua. Does this make that fight less attractive? Do you want to see that less now after what happened tonight? No, it's a heavyweight fight. Stuff happens in boxing. I still want to see AJ versus Wilder. Um. I haven't yet come to terms that I want to see Andy versus any of the other heavyweights. I just, I feel like he would do good against them, but it hasn't, it hasn't sank in yet that he's now part of the three-headed monster now. It hasn't <laughs> the monster sank has in. four heads. <laughs> yeah, uh, it, hasn't, it hasn't really sank in, but the best fights is still, I feel like, AJ and Wilder, Andy against Tyson Fury or Wilder. I, I want to see a heavyweight undisputed champion. So, however that can happen, I want to see it done. Well, uh, what 
tonight proves and boxing proves over and over again is that on any night, one punch can change history. Wilder has a quite a busy schedule himself. The Ortiz rematch, and then on the heels of that, they've already signed a Fury rematch. Do you see either one of those guys changing history for Wilder? You thought that was strange? Yeah, how fast the, the match got made after his last fight. I thought maybe they would wait for the decision out of this and then try to get AJ next because, you know, I thought he was going to win. I didn't think I would be uh, finding out that he already had an opponent scheduled for his next fight before this fight was even even over. It was kind of different, but um, what, what did you ask me? Do you think either Ortiz or Fury can upset the apple cart on the other side of this super fight equation? I, I, I would never bet against Wilder. Um, I actually thought Luis Ortiz could beat Wilder the first fight. I'm like, oh, this Luis Ortiz is skilled and everything. And Wilder made me a believer. So I'll be a believer if he fights against uh, Tyson Fury again. And I'll be a believer if he fights against who, who did you just say? Uh, Tyson Fury. The other guy. Uh, Luis Ortiz? Yeah, when he fights against Lu Luis Ortiz again, I'm still cheering for Wilder. Well, I think 2019 can be uh, coined the year of new believers because Andy Ruiz made a new believer here tonight in Madison Square Garden. He turned the crowd in his favor by the end. They were chanting Ruiz, and uh, there was a lot of British fans here who were congratulating the Mexican, the first Mexican heavyweight champion. So uh, A couple months ago, we were congratulating the undisputed middleweight champion. A lot of things happened in 2019. Clarissa Shields, it's always a pleasure to talk to you. Thanks for your analysis. Always on point, Radio Raheem with Claressa Shields. William Hill sponsors Seconds Out.